start with the story. So the time was 6 o'clock and a five-year-old boy came running from his school with a heavy bag, hugged his mother, told her, I love you. He was only five years. Once he turns out to be 15 years, maybe he'll say some other person, I love you. But he's only five years. So he said his mother, I love you. And the first question he asked his mother was, uh, mom, when would dad come home today? And mother very clearly said, uh, he called me just now and he said he's taking an extra class today. He'll be late. You go, change your dress, fresh up, complete your homework, have your dinner, and sleep. That was his daily routine. So son accepted. Son said, OK, mom, I'll do that. And he got, he freshened up. He changed his dress. He completed his homework. He had his dinner, but he didn't sleep. The time was 8.30. That was his regular sleeping time. Mom shouted, saying that, come on, Sid, or Siddhu, go and sleep. And uh, he said, OK, mom. But he didn't sleep. Maybe he has something very important to discuss with his father. It's 9 o'clock, father hasn't come. 9.15, father hasn't come. 10 o'clock, father hasn't come. And at 10.15, father came, very tired, very frustrated, very irritated, because he worked for a lot of time that day. And son didn't know all these things. He went running to his father and asked him, Dad, you work so hard. How much you earn? And he was very irritated. And this question irritates him more. And he shouted at, those, at the boy because he didn't sleep yet. He was supposed to sleep at 8.30. And his, uh, his father's wife, that is his mother, slept already because he has to rush to her office next day morning. So she slept. And he was irritated by that also. Uh, but uh, you know, and the father, father shouted at his son saying that you didn't sleep yet, just go to bed. That's none of your business. And son said, uh, very innocently asked him, no, 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 dad, please tell me how much you make an hour. You worked an extra hour. That is what mom, mom said. Then father said, uh, OK, I earn 2,000 per hour. How does that matter? You now go and sleep. Then son said, dad, give me 300 rupees. Then father couldn't control his anger. He said, before I slap you, go and sleep. This is why you're asking me money. This is why you want to know how much I earn. And, uh, you ask me money for some stupid toys. Uh, your mother has not brought you up properly. She will never tell you how much work I do, how much hard I work. Every day in the morning, I go and I come very late in the night. And you don't know all the things. You waste money on stupid things. You're asking me 300. Shameless boy, go and sleep. And the, the eyes became very wet, the boy. And he went into his room. He shut his door. And father was, you know, carried the same emotion again. He was not liking his son, asking him money. Uh, after knowing how much he earns. So he didn't like it. Half an hour he was in the same mood. But later he realized his uh, son never asked him money or hardly asked him money. So he thought there, is, there might be something very important. Uh, so he, is, he has calmed down, cooled down. He knocked the door of his son and asked him, are you, are you asleep, son? Are you sleeping? Son said, no, dad, please come in. He went in and he said, I was very frustrated with the colleagues, with the co-employees. Uh, I was irritated with all the things in the office. I'm really sorry, son. I didn't even ask you the reason why you wanted money. So maybe there is something very important for you. Take this 300. You asked me 300. And the son got so excited. He took 300 with his right hand. And with his left hand, he lifted the pillow. And under the pillow, there is a lot of money, so much money. And father again lost his temper, seeing so much money, and he's asking 300 rupees. <laughs> you have so much of money, and you're still asking me money. You have become so greedy. You're not growing properly. That is so bad. Then son said, no, dad, I'm really sorry. I didn't have enough money, dad. I had only 1,700 rupees with me. With this 300, it is 2,000 rupees, dad. Take this 2,000. And please, dad, come one hour early tomorrow. It has been a long time, Dad. I have spent time with you. I want to have dinner with you. There are a lot of things I have to share with you, Dad. Dad, please come one hour early, Dad. This is your hourly payment. He bought his father's time. There ends the story. And I don't say the story again. This is the lifestyle of 21st century, of many families. I can't say all, because there might be some families uh, who are different from this. But most of the families. You know, there are a lot of things in the story. The story is very, very old, very known story. I, I don't write story. I, I only tell stories. So it is already, I have heard it a lot of times. I just wanted to share because, again, 21st century, I have some valid points to discuss now. The one thing is uh, time. 
think once. We speak so much about buying money. We, think, we speak so much about buying oxygen in the future, buying air in the future, or uh, buying water. And uh, we ignore the fact that we are buying time. Whose time? Our own people. Time of mother, time of father, time of brother, time of sister, time of husband, time of wife, time of son, time of daughter. We are buying time. We don't realize that we are buying time. We don't have time. We use very frequently the word we don't have time. When somebody asks me to speak to them or uh, takes an appointment, I say, okay, okay, I'll adjust time. Am I adjusting time? Can I adjust time? I'm an aptitude trainer. I speak a lot about time and work, time and distance. It looks like mathematics, time and speed. In time and work, work has come into our control. We all know that. And in time and distance, distance has come into our control. I can speak to the person who is staying in America right now, right here. I can make a video call. The distance has decreased to a major extent. And time and speed, and the earlier speakers also spoke about it. The speed, and we are in that generation where the metro trains, the aeroplanes, the rockets, we go to Chennai in one hour time. So the speed has increased so much these days. And try to understand the fact that the only time has not come into our control yet. And we say we'll adjust time. No, we have to get adjusted to the time. And time is so, so, so important. And uh, we work so hard for our bosses in the office because we have committed to something. We rush to the office on time. We have to use the fingerprint there. And uh, we complete projects on time. But we don't realize that there is something called family, which accepts you the way you are, which they never want you to you know, uh, change or uh, uh, they, 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 they are happy with the way you are. They don't expect those commitments to be fulfilled. But we have also committed to them. While you are getting married, you take a lot of commitments. You make a lot of commitments. You have kids. Again, there are so many commitments. But you ignore all the facts there. So unfortunately, the time we don't give to anyone who are very close to us. And when you get back to the story, how did father shout at him? He didn't know the reason. He didn't, want it. he didn't want to know the reason. He was simply shouting at his son. That is patience. And again, the same old thing. We shout so much. We, we, you know, we don't have patience. That is why when I speak about T20, uh, the 21st generation, the first thing which strikes me is T20 cricket, uh, which has become popular from 2006. And 2007, uh, the World Cup, inaugural World Cup, or 2008 IPL, in a couple of weeks, there is an IPL. We are so excited to watch a T20 cricket because, because it ends in three hours. Three hours time. In the same country where test cricket was so popular, uh, the five-day cricket matches uh, we watched with families. Uh, people applied for leaves. They went to the stadiums. There were packed houses in 1980s and 1990s. And all of a sudden, we are so used to this T20 cricket because we want that result in three hours. Now, when you see stadiums, there are hardly people. Hardly people. There are only hundreds of people in the stadiums. There are empty stands in the stadiums. Because we don't have time. And uh, the short films, so popular. Again, a three-minute short film. We learn three million views in three days' time. Incredible. You know, such a popularity. Because we are eager, and I have a couple of my friends, you know, who read only first five pages of a novel, and then they go to last five pages because they want to know the result. They're eager. <laughs> and, uh, and that is how the things have changed in 21st century, and I'm afraid. I'm seriously afraid. We are only 17 years old, or 17 years, uh, 3 months, and 23 days. Sorry, 2 months and 23 days. So we are only 17 years old. There are uh, 80, 83 years more in 21st, gen gen in 21st century. So where are we moving? What are we doing? Uh, we, 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 we ignore certain things. And one thing I'll tell you, this is all not because we are bad. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are inhuman. No, we are human beings. We were the same human beings. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, just try to understand. Because we don't give that importance to the time, and we don't have that much patience, we every time move to the word called humanity. And I go to any parties, any functions, and any public gathering. We sit together. The first thing we speak is humanity. How do we speak? How do they speak? How do we listen? They say humanity uh, decreased, humanity diluted, humanity vanished. There is no humanity for the people in 21st century. As a hu the, the human being do not exist. That is how they speak. Do we not? Uh, we, we all are human beings, aren't we? We exist. If I speak, if, if I speak, 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 and fall down from here, will you say, nice happened? 
You don't say, it need not be my father or mother or brother running from there. Somebody from here comes running to me, they lift me up and they ask me, are you fine? A pure humanity. When we go on the road and when we see a road accident, do we say, get excited that live accident I have witnessed? No, you don't do that. You stop your vehicle, you call the ambulance. If required, you'll take that person to the hospital in your own vehicle. And you feel so bad for him and his family. Humanity. You read a newspaper, you read a news of earthquake, or a tsunami, or a bomb blast, and so many people died and injured. Do you say that, uh, yes, population decrease, this is what I was waiting for. Oh, such a great news. You share with a lot of people. No, you carry that depression throughout the day. Humanity again. We watch movies and we want hero to defeat villain in the climax. Humanity. Perfect humanity. I don't enjoy any film where villain wins. Serious. Humanity. So, so let me tell you, let me tell you, the most beautiful thing, uh, the most important thing is we still hate corruption. We still hate terrorism. Still the fundamental rights are same, fundamental duties are same, still the respect for the nation is same, we rise for the national anthem, respect for the military is same, respect for elders, respect for teachers, everything is the same. Then how can my father's generation speak to me saying that you don't have humanity, we were like this. I have born to my father and I'll be like my father. I don't show because things have changed. I don't express humanity. I don't say again and again that I have humanity. But we have humanity. You exist. I exist. We all exist. So we all have humanity. That is certain thing we all have to accept. And the other thing, very, very, very important is taking family for granted. Because they don't expect us to change. And the son, he wants his father's time, not money. Income minus expenditure is equal to saving. Old formula. Earning money plus spending time is equal to living life. New formula. Very new formula. And, uh, and let me tell you, let me tell you certain things now. See, if you don't give importance to time, if you don't balance time, and life is not uh, uh, permanent, uh, permanent, it ends somewhere, and we postpone things to that extent, and all of a sudden we realize that there is no time to postpone also. And it will be too late at times. And we regret so much, and regret is such a bad thing which can happen to a human being. Regret. I'll give you a small example, how much you regret, you think now. You go on a road, and there is a red signal, you stop your vehicle, the beggar comes begging, begging for money, 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 money. You stop your car, you search for one rupee coin, you search for one rupee coin, and you don't find, you find a two rupees coin. You don't want to give him two rupees. <laughs> And you ask the person sitting beside you, your brother or a friend, one rupee, one rupee, one rupee, one rupee, one rupee. You ask the people sitting behind you, one rupee, one rupee, one rupee, one rupee. And suddenly there is a green light and there is an arm from behind because they don't have time on. And you have to move. You move. And after a while you realize, I should have given him two rupees. Why was I searching for one rupee? Array. I should have given him two rupees. It was okay. And you regret. For that one rupee, you regret for three days. I am telling you, if you keep postponing time which you have to spend with your spouse or your parents or your brothers and sisters, siblings, or your kids, you postpone saying that, let me do it later, let me do it later. And all of a sudden, one day, maybe, I'm not saying that it will be, it will happen, but maybe, maybe you will uh, say it might be too late and things may never come back. And the other thing which is very, 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 very important here is uh, understand uh, uh, the value of, I, I, I keep speaking about it again and again, but I don't get bored if I speak it thousand times also. The thing is, when I speak to a new person, I get attracted. Obviously, because he's a new person, it's, uh, I, I share an idea with him, and he says, amazing, mind-blowing idea. And when I say the same thing to my mother, she will never like it. She will say it will not work. And I always feel that my mother is not motivating me. The other person is seriously, he, is so, he, he knows me better than my mother. Absolutely not. My mother is saying it is not working. It won't work because she knows it won't work. And the other person whom I spoke to, he's saying it's an amazing idea because it doesn't matter to him whether it works or not. I'll give you a simple example. You go to a shopping mall with your mother or father, and you, you like a dress, you try it out. And once you come out and you, keep, you, you, you ask your mother, how is it? Before your mother reacts, the salesman reacts saying that, amazing madam, you look so beautiful in this. I think this is designed for you. And your mother says, no, 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 the size is not good. It's not suiting you. Try another one. 
You try another one and you come out. Again, he gets excited. This is what I was looking at. This is really, this is great. And again, the same thing. Your mother will not like it. After 10 times, when that looks best on you, your mother says, great. Because they want you to look, uh, you look great, do good, do something most important. And we forgot that today we have got used to that fast culture. I'm telling you, I'm really uh, not liking, I shouldn't say that in the, in the, in the, in the talk for sure, but I don't like, uh, you know, how, how, how me and my family watch uh, movies, you know. I watch uh, in my mobile. My brother watches on laptop. My father enjoys going to theaters. My mother watches on TV. And I watch it in my room, he watches in his room. We all are together, but we are never together. And, uh, and I, I, I can't understand this. One lives in Chennai, one lives in Bangalore. Uh, parents lives, live in their villages and uh, kids in uh, America. Such a, such, a, such a bad thing of 21st century. And, uh, and the time spent is more, more important than the money earned. And you all have to realize that we should not smile for selfies. We should also smile with the families. We should not have fun with the alcohol. We should also have fun with all in the hall. We should not. We should not live for the future. We should live for the few here, few here, and few everywhere. And that is how the life turns out to be very, very, very important. And uh, before I conclude, thank you, thank you so much. But before I conclude, let me tell you, uh, people again criticize on set. They're saying that accidents have increased, accidents have increased, accidents have increased. The vehicles have also increased, we don't realize. People say crime has increased. The media which is showing crime, the channels which is showing crime has also increased. We don't realize. Every time from Hyderabad to Bangalore, when uh, vehicles travel, there might be thousands of uh, vehicles which go safe, but people focus only on those accidents and say accidents have increased. No. We focus on negatives, so we say negatives have increased, but please try to understand the positive also have proportionately increased and proud to be human beings because we are the, we are the species who save tigers, who plant trees, who love pets and who touch hearts. So that's the most beautiful thing we do. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you so much. And that's it from my side. Thanks. <laughs>